What's going on, church? Why don't we go ahead and start this off by saying our faith statements together. Join with me. I am deeply loved, highly favored, greatly blessed, totally righteous, and destined to reign because of Jesus. I always wonder every single week because I can't see you or hear you. I always wonder if you actually say those out loud. <laughs> Hey, we've been walking through our Romans series, and we've been walking through the book of Romans. And what I want to do is I want to take us to Romans chapter 8, uh, verses 18 through 22, 23. Um, and we're going to have some fun. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for everything that you're going to do right here, right now. I am so grateful that we get to be together on this amazing, absolutely crazy, awesome day. In your name we pray, all God's people sit together now. Amen. All right, so this is a two-part sermon, and I've titled it Our Future Destiny and Our Job While We Wait. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about our future destiny, and then we're going to be talking a little bit about our job while we wait, because we're not at our future destiny yet, and so what do we do while we are waiting? How many of you, how many of you play along here? How many of you uh, love to travel? Let me see those hands. Go ahead and just high five the person next to you if you're that person. And then how many of you do this when you're getting ready to travel? How many of you do a bunch of research on the place you are going? For example, uh, my family and I, we actually went to this resort that was at the Dominican Republic. And in between the time that we were uh, waiting to get there and got there, we went online and we found all kinds of pictures of this resort. And so what it did was it generated this excitement. We were really super pumped up to arrive at that destination in the future. Well, this is what I've noticed, right? The picture doesn't do it justice because when you actually arrive at the destination, you're able to experience everything that you've been researching and the picture just doesn't quite do it justice. Right now, currently, we are living in the picture. Everybody say, I'm in the picture. We're living in the picture. And what I mean by that is this. Our future destiny is going to be an eternity in heaven. Before we get there, though, we're doing our research right here. We have a picture of what heaven is going to be like when we look into the word of God. We can study about streets of gold and we can study about the throne room of heaven, but we're not there yet, but we're living in the picture. So while we're in the picture, it's a little bit different than when we get to our destiny. Romans chapter 8 verse 18 says this, Yet what we suffer is nothing compared to the glory that he will reveal to us. Currently right now in the picture where we live, we endure suffering. Why do we endure suffering? Well, number one, we live in a broken world, so there's going to be brokenness and there's going to be suffering. We can't dodge it. There's going to be stresses. There's going to be depressions. There's going to be anxieties. There's going to be uh, some unknowns. There's going to be uncertainties. There's going to be all those things we face all throughout the year, but we do not need to get lost in those things. We endure them because we know that the future glory is going to be so much better. So in the picture, we endure sufferings while we're here. Romans chapter 8 verses 19 through 22, it says this, for all of creation is eagerly is waiting eagerly for the future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Against its will, all creation was subjected to God's curse. But with eager hope, the creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in the glorious freedom from death and decay. For we know that all creation has been groaning as it as like pains in childbirth right up to the present time. The thing that I think is absolutely incredible is not only are we waiting right now in the picture, but all creation, the whole universe is on tiptoe waiting in the picture, waiting for that future glory moment when God brings all of us together outside of this curse called sin. In this verse, it used two words that I think we need to key in on a little bit. It used the word freedom from death and freedom from 
decay. Our future destiny will be free from death and it will be free from decay. Have you ever, have you ever smelled something that is like decaying, right? Uh, for example, I've got a little teacup Yorkie dog. It's just a little tiny dog. When we first got it, it can fit in the palm of our hands. Now it's like a two pound dog and it's, our dog's name is Nicki Minaj. Yeah. Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. We love that little dog. And that little dog loves people. Well, here's what we noticed about that dog. When people came around, come around, that dog will run to them. Oftentimes they will pick it up and Nikki will start to lick. Now there's nothing wrong with that except for the fact that uh, we begin to rec uh, recognize this foul smell that was coming from Nikki's breath. And we we're like, what is that? Because as new, as new animal owners, as dog owners, as pet owners, we're like, we have no idea what's going on. And so we called the vet and we're like, hey, our dog's breath is horrible horrible. What can we do about this? And they said this, they said, well, actually what happens is when the dog's teeth begin to decay, it creates an odor. And that's why Nikki's breath smells. And so we took the dog into the vet and the vet uh, grabbed Nikki and pulled out all kinds of teeth, including Nikki's canine teeth, right? Well, here's what we learned about the canine teeth. The canine teeth are responsible for keeping a dog's tongue inside of its mouth. <laughs> so when we went back to pick Nikki up, Nikki came running out of the of of the um, vet. Why am I having such a hard time word hard times with words right now? Good lord! Uh, Nikki came running out of the vet clinic, and her tongue was wagging like way out here, like just wagging all over the place. <laughs> and Annie's like, "Oh, my wife is like." Ooh, yeah, I don't know if that's a Wilson dog anymore. <laughs> and so we actually had the discussion of keeping Nikki at the vet and not bringing her home. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, the, the the dentist, good night. The vet uh, actually said, hey, you know what? She's numb in her mouth right now. Her tongue will go back in her mouth. Well, the tongue is not fully gone back in her mouth yet. And she, she walks around like this all the time. <laughs> but it's not way out here. So we got rid of the decay in her mouth. It's no longer present. Our future destiny is going to get rid of the death and the decay that life has to offer. And so number one, our destiny includes freedom from death and decay. Freedom from death and decay. Our world as we know it, when, our, when we reach our destiny, when we, when we reach that moment where we enter into heaven, our world will be completely different. There will be no more death. There will be no more decay, right? I was talking with a guy the other day and I asked him, I said, how are you doing? And he said, that, he said this, he said, well, I am decaying one day at a time. <laughs> I thought that was really funny because it's true, right? We have this circle of life. There's birth, there's decay, and then there's death. Well, our future destiny in heaven doesn't include any of those. We will be completely freed from all the death this world has to offer, from all the decay this world has to offer, and we will spend eternity in our destiny with Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verse 23, it says, And we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of the future glory. For we long for our bodies to be released from sin and from suffering. You guys excited about being released from sin and suffering forever? I am so pumped up. I am so excited about the day that I will no longer need to wrestle with this thing called sin. And so number two, our destiny includes freedom from sin and suffering. There will be absolutely no more sin and no more suffering when we enter heaven. It will be completely non-existent. Think about that for a minute. It will be unknown. If we lived in a world right now where sin and suffering was unknown, oh my goodness, think about how much more awesome life would be, right? No more diseases. No more anxiousness, no more relational conflicts, no more wondering, no more uncertainties, no more temptations, no more falling into sin. It's it's done. It's it's gone. It's completely unknown. And we will be free from that. I think that that feeling is going to be absolutely mind-blowing when we no longer have sin or suffering even known. And that's our destiny. Romans chapter 8 to 823 says, We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our rights 
as his adopted children. Number three, our destiny includes full access to heaven's wonders. Full access to heaven's wonders. Heaven's wonders become ours. And I think that is incredible that the creator of the universe wants to share his wonders with us as if we were family. That's incredible. So I started thinking a little bit about wonders a little bit. And and, uh, I, I found a wonder in Tampa, Florida. So I'm a foodie. I love food. I I know you can tell, like, like I get skinny and you can tell on the video and then I get fat. You can tell on the video when I'm getting fatter. That's because I'm enjoying food more. (laughs) The wonderful food, right? Okay. So I was in Tampa, Florida and and I ordered this, the sandwich and in the picture, it was like, it was amazing. And so the server brought it out and set it before me. And on this sandwich, here's what it looked like. It had a fried macaroni and cheese. Then it had the cheeseburger. Then it had lettuce, onions, pickles. Then it had another fried macaroni and cheese for the buns. That's what the the buns were actually fried mac and cheese. Tried to shove the whole thing in my mouth. Impossible. Wasn't going to work. And so what I did was I started eating it from the top down. Well, when I got through that, that delicious morsel of fried macaroni and cheese, I was so full. I couldn't even get to the burger or the lettuce, the pickles, the tomatoes, the onions, or the bottom because I was so full, but it was wonderful. Oh my goodness. It was wonderful, right? You get what I'm saying, foodies? You know what I'm talking about when you're eating something that is your favorite thing on the face of the planet or something that you're trying brand new and you're like, oh, you know? So in heaven, that's what it's going to be like. Our destiny includes a wonderfulness of God's wonders. We get full access to all of that. The Bible says, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, it says, What no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. We can't even imagine the wonders that he has for us. We, it can't even enter into our human brain. Think of how amazing our destiny must be then. Think about how amazing heaven must be. Romans chapter 8, 23, it says this, it says, our destiny includes new bodies that he has promised us. And so number four, our destiny includes a perfect new body free of pain and free of disease. How many of you right now would love a perfect, brand new, glorified body free of pain and free of disease? Holla at you, boy, if you know what I'm saying, me too. As I've gotten older, I've recognized that joint pain is a real thing. I've recognized that heartburn is a real thing. I've recognized that increased gas is a real thing. You know what I mean? Well, our glorified bodies will will have none of the pain and none of the suffering that we experience now. 2 Corinthians 5, 2 through 5, it says this, We grow weary in our present bodies, and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. For we will put it on for we will put on heavenly bodies. We will not be spirits without bodies. While we live in these earthly bodies, we groan and sigh, but it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that close us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life by, by the life that God gives. God himself has prepared us for this, and as a guarantee, he has given his Holy Spirit. We get a brand new body in our destiny. Now, that's all awesome, right? We get back to the reality, though. We're we're living in the picture. We're not at our destination yet. We're not at our destiny yet. We're living in the picture. So while we're living in the picture, while we're waiting for our destiny, what do we do, right? Because we could, we honestly, we could just find a lazy boy. We could chill out on that lazy boy. We could eat popcorn. We could eat mac and cheese. We could eat burgers. We could watch TV. We could Netflix binge all we want. We, we could just sit there, right? But that's not what we're called to do. Part two of this sermon is this. What is our job while we wait? Well, Romans chapter eight, verses 24 uh, through 25 says this. We were given this hope when we were saved. We were given this hope when we were saved. If we already have something, this is important to remember, if we already have something, we don't need to hope for it. We already have it. And we were given this hope while we were saved. But if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must we must wait patiently and confidently. So number one, here we go. Number one, we wait patiently and confidently. 
we wait patiently and confidently. While we're living in the picture, waiting for our destiny, we wait patiently and we wait confidently. This means this. We don't get all wrapped up in the worries and the struggles this world has to offer. No. Why? Because he has given us hope of our future glory. We are just traveling through these things right now. And we don't get all worked up. We wait patiently and confidently. The world right now, though I honestly, the world right now needs more confident people. People that can look at us and say, you know what? I know that you might be facing hell right now, but you're going to walk right through it because you have a promise of future glory. I know that that relational conflict is difficult right now, but you're going to walk right through it. Why? Because you have hope of a future glory. You may be struggling with some temptations and with some things that you desire to get out of your life. You're going to keep moving forward. Why? Because you are waiting patiently and confidently for your future glory. We do not need to lack confidence. Every single day you leave your house and you say, I am confident. Say that right now. I am confident. What are we confident of? The fact that God has promised us future glory. Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27 says, And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. See that? Helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray, uh, but the Holy Spirit for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And so while we're going through this life, waiting patiently and confidently, sometimes we're going to have those moments where we don't even know what to pray, right? That's okay, because God understands our heart. The Spirit of God understands our heart, and the Spirit of God takes those things that are in our heart that we don't even know how to express to God, and God answers those prayers. How cool is that? Number two, while we wait, while we live in the picture, while we live in the picture, we wait in prayer, we pray to Him, and we pray through Him. All right. Here's the deal. What is the most powerful thing that we could do while we wait for our destiny? If you said prayer, you nailed it. Prayer is powerful. If in fact we have not spent our time with God, we will experience trouble on this planet. We will experience a lack of confidence. We will experience stresses. We will get anxious. We will be freaking out about the uncertainties. However, if we stay in prayer and if we stay in the attitude and the presence of prayer, and if we, if we just continually pray through all of this stuff, God will reinstate the confidence we need for the day, the hour, the minute, and the second that we're living. Prayer is powerful. Pray for a few things every day. Pray for your family. Pray for your family. That is the most important thing that you could pray for because a house that is developed on prayer is a house that has established a firm foundation. Pray for your family. Pray for your relationships. Pray for your bosses. Pray for your government. Pray for your world. Pray for anything and everything. Why? Because we know that as we pray, it summons heaven. Heaven's Heaven comes down, interacts on earth, and we just get to see God at work more and more. So consistently pray. So while we wait, we pray. Romans chapter 8, 28 says this, We know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purposes. So number three, we wait firmly planted in faith. We know that God is working behind the scenes, firmly planted in faith. So I'm not very good in the yard, but there was this this tree that was beginning to grow. And I'm like, why is that tree growing? Come to find out acorns can actually cause a problem in your yard. Yeah, I didn't know that, but my wife did. And she keeps on telling me, you need to pick up the acorns. You need to pick up the acorns. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go pick up the acorns, right? So then I go outside and I'm, I'm, I'm looking around the yard and there's this, this tree that's growing. I'm like, I did not plant that tree there. So how did that tree get there? That was the acorns. So I figured, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to walk right up to it. I'm going to pull it out. I pulled on that tree and it wouldn't budge. So I told my wife, I said, I can't get that thing. She's like, that's because you're weak. So then she deploys the boys, right? So my 18-year-old who's been lifting weights and he's always in the gym comes and he goes down in this perfect like squat position, right? I don't even use muscles 
uh, that are that are connected to squat position. I had to Google squat to find out what it was, right? Well, he goes down in this perfect squat position. He tries to pull on it, and he's just shaking, trying to get the thing out, you know? And, and he stops, and as a second born, he's like, I'm not going to let this tree kick my butt, right? So he get, gets down, tries again, and he's shaking, trying to get the thing out. Just... <sighs> <laughs> and it's not budging. So then my firstborn, my 20 year old, he's like, well, I'm not going to let you show me up. And so he walks up, barely tugs on. He's like, nope, that's not coming out. Walks away, right? <laughs> Why couldn't they pull it out? Because it's firmly planted. See, in this life, there are going to be a lot of things that try to pull on us. That's why it's so important to be firmly planted in our faith. When something tries to pull our roots out, we need to remain firmly planted. When the storms of life come rolling through, we need to remain firmly planted. Why? Because we know that God is working behind the scenes of everything going on in our lives. If in fact, we are believers. If in fact, we are believers. God is at work behind the scenes. Listen, I don't know what you're facing today. I don't know what you faced last week. I want to give you some hope and encouragement though. God is working behind the scenes. Remain firmly planted. When you walk out into your community, you can tell people, I am a firmly planted tree. <laughs> what did you learn from your pastor this last week? I am a firmly planted tree. <laughs> Be firmly planted. Last one, I'll land the plane. I've had a lot of fun with you today. I uh, really hopped up about this. Thank you so much for being patient uh, in the waiting. <laughs> Number four uh, on our job while we wait, while we live in the picture, we wait by encouraging others to have the same faith in God that we have. Our world right now needs a lot of encouragement. People all around us need to hear the hope that we have because we serve Jesus. Let's not sugarcoat it. When we have discussions during the day that allow for us to say, I believe in Jesus, let's come right out and say it so that they can also experience the hope in the waiting, just like we are. Listen, even though we're in the picture, I want you to know I love doing life with you in the picture. I love it. This has been such a joy. This has been such an honor. And I want you to know that I think about you. I pray for you. I love you guys. Every one of you that clicks the play button, listen, it has been an honor doing life with you as we wait in the picture. I can't wait. I can't wait to arrive with the, at the destination with you. Why don't we go ahead and wrap this up uh, with our blessing verse, Psalms chapter 67, verses 1 and 2. Let's say it together. God, be gracious to us and bless us. Make his face shine upon us, that his way may be known on earth, his saving power among all nations. Be blessed. We'll see you next time.